Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell Tell You Something. Something. And I'm here with no other than my big dog, Nate Dog, in the building. What's up, you baby? Man, I'm excited. You're excited? I'm excited excited about this show. I was sitting up here like, what are we going to do today? Okay. And you open this thing up so sweet. With some hotness. With some hotness. Hey, he he said something with his chest. Yeah, I said it with my chest. With your whole body, though. We're going to get there, man. I don't want (laughs) to get too excited. I'm going to get depressed once we talk about some of the details of it. (laughs) Okay. Uh, But, man, you know, we got to touch base with your boys. How do you think your boys did on Thanksgiving? Uh, We we previewed it last week. They went out there and smacked up the doggone Giants on Thanksgiving. You felt good about it? Three games in 12 days. A lot. Uh, Why why, why is that significant, Nate? Oh, you get beat up. Physically. You get you physically get beat up, especially when you're trying to establish yourself as a as a physical okay. team. And as we saw against Green Bay, we tried to go finesse and got handled. Yeah. And then we came back the next week against Minnesota and wanted to get physical. Uh-huh. And we won by a, a big margin. But then we took that same attitude, not physically, yeah. but mentally over to uh this Yeah. Who would hook me out? Who the Giants? Did, to the Giants. Yeah. And it didn't happen yeah. because all of a sudden, we want to go to tossing the ball everywhere. Mm. It's three things that has to happen for the Cowboys to be successful, okay. or really four. But I'm going to give you the top three. Okay. Our quarterback has to stay within the range of 35 passes or less. Okay. I believe that with all my heart. Mm-hmm. I think we have to have at least 31 minutes of time of possession. Okay. And I think we have to be over 45% on third downs. Oh, wow. If we want to be this physical team okay. that we're talking about, now, one now, thing now, we now, what, really what, have to do... But when you talk about those goals, right, 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 those are tangible goals. Yes. But when you talk about success, people's definition of success is different now right. based upon the person that you're talking to. When you and Nate, when Mr. Nate Newton talks about success, what does that equate to? Uh, what, what, does that we, talk about playoffs, like first round? Or does that talk uh, about NFC championship game, them, you know, divisional game? Is that uh, talk about for, playoff round? Like, no, for me, I, I, I don't live in a fantasy world. Okay. I don't play fantasy football. <laughs> I'm talking about getting to the second round. Second round. Yes, because you're too inconsistent with who you are. You Do you know who the Cowboys I don't know who the Cowboys are. Still it's somewhere out. between Green Bay and... In Minnesota. Okay. Trying to establish who they are. All right. And Talking about their identity. Yeah, the identity. And then we still haven't solved the biggest issue of all. Let's preach that penalties. Mm. We, so. Okay. Is that correctable? Uh, it's correctable if the players want to be corrected. Okay. You know, the coaches can bring refs out there. They can blow the whistle. Uh-huh. You can't bench four or five guys because yeah. the offensive line is maybe your, your main culture. culprit. What, what would Jimmy Johnson have done? If he was facing that same issue with his team. Well, a lot of this stuff is about physical work. Okay. And you have to work these techniques. They don't do the physical work and of what we used week. to do. Okay, I get you. Yeah. So they're getting, they're getting slighted on the reps. Yeah, yes. So that's, that's you're saying that's a downside to some of these protective measures that the league right. is taking. Right. right. You I put on the big helmets and do less work. <laughs> the padded <laughs> joints. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, you so you're you're okay with their victory, but not, I'm okay. but not satisfied. I'm not satisfied because I still, I, I, as I look at the league and who we have to go up against, we we still can't handle bully ball. Yeah, if people come in with a with, with the right talent and the right frame of mind, we haven't proved that we can stop bully yeah, ball. I agree, I agree. So how you feel about when Tennessee comes in there? When Tennessee, no, you don't even want to look past <laughs> the Eagles. Stop. You don't even want to look past because they bully ball. All right. The Green I got Bay you. bad, bro. I got you. So we're talking about bully ball. Now, there's a, we're going to talk about physical specimens 
here in a little bit, but one of the physical specimens, I saw a video of this dude walking on the sideline. I'm not, sh- I'm not sure if you've seen it or not, Nate, but I'll show it to you. Okay. There's this dude walking on the sideline and um, by the name of Tack McKinley. Right, right. And, you know, he's about to get activated and all that jazz, and this dude is a, is a beast. So what, what are your thoughts on, on him about to be activated by the Dallas Cowboys? Adding him to what is already a, a super deep decent defensive end group. I got to find this dog on clip the, for you. The, the thing that what, what 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 we need right now is guys that have a mindset and that can play within the run scheme. Okay. We we got pass rushes, Isaiah. We got we got them everywhere. They they like dropping out of trees, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But w- can can Tack come in and fill his lane when it's time when 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 the bullet ball boys come up in here in a couple of weeks? And that and that's what I'm worried. About. He looks good. Look, he look, can rush the pass. Oh look, man, I know he can rush the pass. Look, look at that pic. Look at that video right there. Look at man. Look at. <laughs> you need to chop his arms off, man. <laughs> you just, arms like yeah, you can you can chop his arms off, bro, and just go to beating folks to death with him. Yeah. So. But that's all well and good. Yeah. But will them arms sit down and and, and, and two gap and lock out okay. somebody and but, set the head? He, so he's known for having a little attitude. We talked about the okay. Duncan Sue and uh, how I felt like they should have signed him and then it didn't happen. They right. must have listened to what we was talking about because right. the Eagles went definitely listened to our podcast and right. went and grabbed him. But anyway, talk about that potential attitude and and, and um. <sighs> And just just uh, the vibe that Ndamukong Sue was going to bring, the edge he was going to bring to the defensive line potentially, and obviously he's now bringing that to Philadelphia. Do you feel like Attack McKinley brings that same vibe? Because that's what I'm, he's known for as well. I'm hoping. Okay. I'm hoping. Uh, you just know, that nasty. That nasty just. The only thing that time would tell. Okay. And, and, and uh, we went out and got Hankins, and, uh, and, 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 you know, a little bit has changed, but we – but only as soon as you, soon as you got Hankins, there was two 200 yard rushing games against That's you. That's what I'm saying. Only time will tell. It, 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 do we have an edge? Do we have people that really want to play and get nasty? Okay. It's a, it's a, when you're winning, a lot of things can be ignored. Facts. And when it becomes, uh, I don't want to say nothing bad on that, but when it gets close to the, yeah. to the edge, when it's time yeah, to drop yeah, a pass, yeah. I know, I know we'll what you're saying. See. I know what you're saying. We'll see, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So that's our, our, our synopsis, obviously, of the Dallas Cowboys this past week. But one of the things that came down and I want to kind of talk about in this, this story here will help us transition. I want to talk about athletes and the difference of athletes from back in the day versus the athletes now. And I basically want to get into, you know, like the parents and leaving kids to playing just one sport versus what we used to do back in the day and kind of how, how, how did you grow up, you know, playing sports. But one of these doggone superstars – in soccer. The World Cup's going on. Yes. Okay? And, yes. You know, you got all the countries playing right now. U.S. is doing really good. They just got another victory, and, um, you know, they're on to the knockout round. And now you got, you know, the, the the Messis of the world playing with Argentina, and then you have a dude by, by the name of Christian Ronaldo. Yeah. Christian Ronaldo is playing for this organization called Manchester United. And yes. They're paying him out the wazoo, and they had a nice little disagreement in terms of where he's at in his career. He's 37 years old. He's been one of the best in the round to do it. Right, right. right. Physically, just a specimen. You talk, right. talking about somebody in soccer who treats their body well, who does all the all the training, all the treatment, all the training. I mean, everything that you could think of. His diet. He's I mean, LeBron like. Oh my God. He's. I mean, he's he's better. I mean, uh, he's, he's a more of a, he's a more yet. of a specimen than LeBron in right. my opinion. Right. Wow. Like LeBron was just born that way. Chris Ronaldo was born that way, and then he takes it up to the next level. But and he and he makes LeBron money look silly, which right, is crazy right, to me. Right. Right. But this dude works his tail off. This dude is now being offered. He's a free agent. He's about to be a free agent. He's being offered by a team in Saudi Arabia. Okay, and we know Saudi Arabia started that live golf right. golf um, league, right? And a lot of people from the PGA started leaving, right? All this money was being dumped in there, and people were mad at these players. How dare you leave the PGA and go right. play go and make a bunch of money for yourself and leave, you know, leave the PGA. Right. I got, I got a doggone family to take care of, Nate. I don't, yeah. I don't know what people's real outlook on that is but anyway Saudi Arabia is dumping a bunch of money into sports they did the live and now they're going out there and they're going after Christian Ronaldo do you know how much money they offered this dude Christian Ronaldo no no, I don't man they offered him a three-year contract upwards of 207 million dollars per year 200 and what 207 million dollars per year 
That comes out to $17.2 million per month. Wow. Wow. That's nice. It'd be that talented and it'd be sought after that that bad. That said, you know, that 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 encompasses it all. Uh-oh. That encompasses it all, man. How yeah. So <laughs> I can't. I can't even. I played the wrong dog on sport. Obviously, right. man. I should have been out there kicking the ball somewhere. But in a different country. In a different country. Yeah. In a different country because I can't. This that's just unfathomable. But when I see things like this, I think about the opportunities that guys have as athletes and what the what it's provided <laughs> us. I know particularly in our lives. But like, what do you think has changed? Right. Like you think about Ronaldo. Like Ronaldo. Like he did one sport. Right. He did one sport. He was a soccer player. Right? Did you did you just do one sport? Did you just play nah, football growing nah. up? What'd you do? But see, in America, it's totally different. That's true. And it, you know, some sp- like uh, in the in the world itself, soccer is the number one sport. Very much so. And to be a a soccer player, especially in small countries that don't have the financial yep. that we have, it, it is not a lot of options. Mm. And so you you put all your focus. It ain't about when I grow up. I'm looking at different athletes on TV. You ha- it's Ronaldo, it's yeah. Pele, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, they focus, man. And so if you're a kid your size with your athletic ability, yeah. just think now, yeah, go kick you a was brought, brought up where he was in Brazil or wherever, bro, bro you would probably be... Boy, my toes would be looking like <laughs> kung fu because I'd be kicking that ball all over the dog. <laughs> I'd be kicking that ball yeah. all over the place. But yeah. what's your outlook, though? Would you Do you believe that athletes growing up now <clears throat> should play one sport because I played what four or five sports? I think four sports. Nah. What's your What's nah. your thoughts on that? Nick? I think a kid should. Uh, each sport has its own identity and what is what it gives you, so it can help you with other sports. You know, like baseball. I always thought you should always do that because it gives you hand eye coordination. Okay. You know, and I look at I look at football because it gives you a physical presence. All right. You know, soccer gives you that foot footwork. Yeah. Footwork and with. But, you know, because a lot of people can look at things and can't make their feet do what these yeah, guys yeah, do because yeah. they can look and see yep. and visualize and all this come become muscle memory. Yep. So I, I think, and then track always gave you to help you with your endurance. Right. So I, every sport has what it does in basketball. I think those are some great athletes too. Yeah. And it gives you body control. It, it, it lets you do multiple things at one time, dribble a basketball, see what's happening, especially from a point guard position, see what's happening, yeah. be able to get rid of that ball, be able to handle that ball. So it all works hand in hand with me. So I've never tried to, um, when even my kids was coming up, hey man, you know, it's, it's, it's football season, or it's basketball season, uh, you know, it's track season. Yeah. Let's get it all in because you never know what you can uh be yeah, great in which you can gravitate towards right for sure how many sports did you play growing uh, up mate? i did football basketball for a little while okay. track all right and baseball for a little while really yeah what did you do in baseball oh, bro, i was sorry <laughs> <laughs> i was sorry you was trash a garbage oh no oh yeah man i got a brother tim who played uh professional football that dude could hit home runs all day long yeah what he happened, what happened when they put you at the plate I got, bro. I was so happy to get to first base. I was, I was, I was a, a slap hitter, bro. If you, if that's the word you use, I get that shot right over, Chop right over it. the second baseman head. Boom, yeah, drop yeah, it right behind gone. him. I'm going to first. Yeah, that's about it. What you do? What you play in basketball? Uh, center. You okay. Because I was big for my size and tall. I played center. You know, bully ball like type guy. How big know? were you at 13, Nate? I was bigger than everybody else. Yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah. That's interesting. So I played, yeah. what I do? I did basketball, football. I didn't start to 13. I think I told you that. Football, basketball, track, and baseball. Right. Those are my four sports. But I didn't, I never touched a, I never touched a soccer ball. Yeah. I never touched, that wasn't, that wasn't a thing in my hood. No. <laughs> nah, nah. I didn't see anybody with a soccer ball in my hood. No, nah, I knew a Pele. Yeah. And uh, every now and then we were kicking around a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody owned no soccer ball. It wasn't no indoor basketball, yeah, though. Yeah. It, 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 the closest we one. got to a soccer ball was a volleyball. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so who, when you think about some of the greatest athletes that you've ever been around, who, I guess, growing up and in the league, who, who like, who's who some guys? Watching? 
Just okay. guys that you were around. Man, I, we didn't have that in Central Florida, Orlando. Yeah. You know, the biggest guy we had that was was all world was a dude named Darrell Dawkins. You know, he went to Evans. You know, he he was he was it. You're talking about the basketball player. Yeah, yeah Darrell yeah. Dawkins. Chocolate Thunder. Yeah. But we distant relatives, you know. Uh, that was a big dude. Who else? That's about it, man. We had some guys that were great. Yeah. They, they didn't go do nothing. Okay. You know, like you got guys in the hood. Like hood cats. Dude, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, we had a dude named Oscar Daniels. He was off so, the chain. Answer me this. Is the best athlete that you've ever been around, did he come out? Was he in the hood that never made it, or was he a guy that you played with in the league? Man, in the hood, man. We, I, I'm telling you, it's a dude named Oscar <laughs> Daniels. <laughs> He was left-handed. Okay. And and this I this one I really realized he was good. Daryl Dawkins used to come home with a couple of his buddies from the Philadelphia 76ers. Yep. And they'd run a three on three, four on four. Okay. And uh they would come out to J High because that's where everybody hung out at Jones High at my high school okay. in the summertime. And Big D will be home, Big Dog will be home. And he'll like, Oscar, don't play with them. We're gonna let you run with us today. And he would play with the pros. Wow. He, he, man. It was that nice. And Dalk would shoot it out there to him, not even hesitate. He was shooting threes for it, but even a, a line. It didn't matter, man. It didn't. Wow. He was the only guy I ever saw would come across that half court line, three feet within that right there, or a yard within that. Pull up. Let that thing go. He was Steph Curry before oh, Steph. Oh, man. Yes, sir. And uh, But back then, you had to have grades to go to school. Yeah, no. I don't think people understand that. Some of the best athletes that – are around. Yes. Just, they they never hear about him. Yeah. We had another guy that was, I thought was all over named Buster Spinks. Ooh, he sounded like he a beast. Oh, man, he he was, it's, it's, back it's, then he was about six feet. Back in high school, he was six feet, six three. Man, 217 pounds. Named Buster. Buster. Uh, he could run. He could run. He could run a nice hundred. He could run. Oh, man, he was all world. Yeah, but. Uh. He went to school. He went to North Carolina Central or somewhere. I don't, I don't, but dang, back home, man. Yeah, to get you. The now, the guy that you. made it big for other dude named Hardy Ram. This okay. dude about 6'6, six, six, about 3'10. Three, three, this is back in the day. Jeez. This back, Hardy Ram went to Notre Dame, but he got hurt his senior year. I think he got hurt, so. So the Newton brothers came up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Man, I would say the best athlete that I've played with would have to be my guy, Nate Robinson. Yeah. And yeah. he made it, though, dog. Yeah, Nate made it. Yeah. Nate made it. But we all grew up together competing against each other, you know, competing against each other, with each other. Um, but Nate was just, he was special. He was special. I mean, he was special in the NBA. He's the only, still to this day, the only three time dunk champion. Yeah, in the, in the NBA, and um, this dude played everything. You know, he didn't. I don't think he played baseball really, but basketball, track, football. I mean, he he went to UW. He went to college on a football scholarship. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah, he went to yeah. We went to school together on a football scholarship, and then he played basketball and went to the NBA. Like Charlie Ward was. From yeah. Florida State. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Like Charlie Ward. That, yeah. That's, you know how great an athlete you really, 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 really have to be? Especially at 5'8"? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was special. Nate was special, man. So, yeah, shout out to Nate. Prayers up for Nate, too, because he's, yeah. he's going through um, kidney failure right now. Yeah, yeah, he's going through kidney failure right now. So I'm going to tell you another guy we had, man. This dude was named Herschel. Mike Walker. Mike Walker. Okay. Next, Mike Walker. He went to Florida State. I think broke his ankle, something like that. But this, I'm telling you. This dude in high school, junior high, this dude in junior high, we played eight games. This dude rushed for over 1,000 yards. We played eight games. He, he probably had about 1,500, 1,600 yards, just killing folks. Then he went to Oak Ridge, you know. Yeah. And, and, and Florida State came and got him, and he broke his ankle. That, it's some, I'm going to tell you, man, the best athletes from my area didn't always. Didn't make it. Yeah. Didn't make it. Yep. No. I, yep. So I had Nate, and I think probably the my other boy was Omar. His name was Omar. And Omar, he in prison now, but Omar was wow. a, he was a dude, and he had another dude named Herbert. Wow. You know, you got them hood names. You don't cast. You cast. You. <laughs> they probably stay, they, yeah, they probably stay right something. there in the hood. They usually stay right there in the hood. Yeah. Wow. And Herbert, we got Herbert. We got him out of out of jail. And brought him on the football team. 
Wow. Yeah, we needed some numbers, so we went to we went to Juvie and pulled him up out of there <laughs> and pulled his butt right on the football team. Yeah, we was having we was having fights like it was doggone the longest yard on the, at practice. And you know what was so funny, Isaiah, is these weren't always the fastest guys in the world. They yeah. just what they did, they were just the best at what they did. Yeah. You know, and uh Man, it's interesting. I was talking, I'm like, I'm not gonna say no names, but I was talking to some of the coaches, okay, in the NFL. And we were having a conversation with some of the former players about the difference in athletes now versus back in our day. And they were talking about just the mentality, the mentality alone. Cats, and even in my day, not even in your day, my day, guys were so much more mentally tougher than they are now. Would you would you agree with that? A hundred percent. To the point, Isaiah, where when we start getting into that, when we do other shows, yeah. when we do other, you notice that kind of back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, guys are so sensitive. <laughs> and, you know, and I'll give you like Odell. I don't know Odell. Correct. I don't know what type of guy he is. When everybody tell me Odell is a great guy. Yep. But I, I'd be hesitant saying I don't want him here. Yeah. Because who's going to run back and tell this man? Oh, Big Noon didn't want you here. So as soon as I say, hey, how you doing, old dad? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you, you. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, and yeah. I'm praying he ain't one of those guys. Yeah, for sure. It's just my opinion. Do you think that yeah. guys are just less? What, what do you think is contributing to that? To guys uh, being, I guess, constructive criticism or people having opinions. Like, it used to be where you had an opinion about somebody. and You could still be, all right, cool. Like, I respect your opinion. I don't have to like your opinion, but I respect your opinion. Like, we can still keep stay cordial. Like, I don't feel like it's that way no more. It's because of the parents. Okay. It's because of how the parents treat them. Participation trophies? Yeah. Uh, you, used to, you used to drop your kid off at practice and coach handle them. Yeah. Now you drop your kids off in practice. Cover. You get your chair and your shade tree or whatever, your umbrella, and you sit right there and watch. That's it. true. And you tell your kid what he should be doing when the coach is trying to coach him. Mm. Uh, he do something wrong and the coach try to straighten him. And, and, and you may not say nothing, but then as soon as your kid get with you, oh, baby, it's all right. A lot of that going on, Nate. Yeah, there's a lot of in the point where you will beat up the coach, yeah, I or beat up that. another opponent, or yeah. do something even worse. Even worse. We've seen that. We've yeah. seen that here recently. I, you know what bothers me, and I, and I don't know how far removed you are from your, you know, from your kids being, you know, you actually watching your kids compete. But I see these parents, and I, and I'm all for the passion. <laughs> I'm all yeah. for parents being invested and passionate about their kids and their development, but. I have to, I, to your point, I've learned a lot from you, Nate, in terms of how yeah. to just be reserved and just sit back and just. <laughs> right, I got mm, to, Right, man. because I see some of these parents and they're trying to take over as coaches. And I'm like, you don't even have a, a grain of athleticism. <laughs> God your, just bless you with a gift. Yeah. And like, you don't know how to use it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like the parents are like overbearing. That's what I'm saying. You know, you're talking about the parents sitting back, you know, watching them for the sidelines and then try to coach them up. But I'm like. If you don't know sports or haven't even played sports, like you probably shouldn't be saying nothing. But like you got these, like they want to coach all these little side tournaments and all this other jazz. And I just sit back there and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what are, what are they doing? What are and I, it's like I don't I don't know. It's right, too much. It's to the point where if they see their kids failing, instead of helping them find help to help them be better. Whether it's technique, whether it's a mental issue, whatever they go to YouTube. They, they, yeah, and they, and then and then they grab the kids and take them out. Are start they hopping? Start hopping around. Yeah. Are they? Uh, this is the biggest thing right here. Or somebody done told them not the coach, but somebody like myself. Said, oh, I like him. He looks good. Ah, da da. What would live it? And now all of a sudden, you don't even bring your kid to practice anymore. No. Hey, Nate Newton said. Yeah, no. Hold on, Nate just said he liked how he built. Nate yeah. didn't, because you know me, I'm all about winning. Yep. You know, I don't care how you look. If we winning, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. And so. <laughs> no, but I think you're, I think you're absolutely correct because I even, my, I think my, my wife and I, we didn't get into it, but we, we had a disagreement mm -hmm. um, a couple of times in reference to my, my kids. Yeah, it must have was a good one because you folded your arms. Yeah, own. yeah. So just, when you yeah, fold your arms. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah, I got defensive, <laughs> body language. But. <laughs> You know, my son, my son didn't want to go to practice one day. Right. He said, I just need a break. I said, what? You need a, 
you need a what? <laughs> and my wife was like, I think we should just keep him home today. I'm like, the heck, we are going to keep him home today. That wow. boy made a commitment. Right. He, I don't care how he's feeling right. in regards to he wants to go to practice or not. Because if you allow that window, that one time, now all of a sudden it's a repeat behavior. Now that's an oper- Now that's a that's an that's that's an option for me. Now practice is a choice. Wow. Right. So that's, that's something I was trying to get across. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't get to pick and choose when you want to go to practice. You know, you don't get to pick and choose if you want to train and get better. Like these are commitments. Wow. And I think a lot of parents are having those discussions, and a lot of them are coming to a consensus. Okay. Yeah, you know, they're not playing you, so let's go to another team. Mm-hmm. Or let's 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 go do this. Or your coach doesn't know what he's talking about, so let me turn on YouTube real quick, and I'm going to go, I'll show you how to do it. I've never played a sport in my life, or never played past middle school, but I'm going to show you what that coach doesn't know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I don't go to... I don't go to kids stuff anymore. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't. I, uh, <laughs> I, I used to love to go watch little kids play. Okay. And I see how coaches, like, even though I was a big kid and we had smaller kids around me when I played, the coach didn't just let me beat up these little kids, you know, physically and yeah. mentally because he knew these kids had to grow. Correct. Some of these kids got not as big as me, but uh-huh. just as tall, yeah. faster, just, quicker. Just, just and I can't even touch them no yeah. more. Yeah. Well, I, I go to some. I went to a practice one time, and I saw this baby. I'm telling you, man, he had to be about this tall. Yeah. Just happened to be seven or eight years old. Okay. And the kid was this tall, and man, they was talking about. I say, sir. Yeah. I don't know who kid that is, but he can't tackle him. I, yeah. You can try to teach a kid to tackle, but not. Not no, that not. type of disadvantage. <laughs> and I, and the man, well, and these coaches be getting yeah, off on it. Now he didn't know who I was. Yeah. Well, you know, it's easy for you to sit over here and say, I, I, oh. mm. I, I got on my bike because I ride my bike. I like it, it, it. back then I said some foul things. Yeah. You know, so uh, hold on. So you was just passing by yeah, and you just, stopped. But I but that right there wasn't fair. Yeah. And so I'm saying to myself, won't he let him tackle kids? his size and learn the right way to tackle kids his right. size. And then when he do run up on that monster, mm-hmm. you know, in a game, he at least can have the idea how to do it right. Nice up, yeah. And so whether we trying to coach our kids, we got to use common sense, but it's got to be a toughness there. Mm-hmm. See, I ain't never had a problem with common sense, but when you allow your kid to mispractice, when you allow your kid to, uh, especially when your kid have that, um, See, back then, we had to move up. Yeah. See, and yep. I don't know if that was right or wrong. Yeah, basically. But I was bigger size. than most people, yep. so I had to move up. Yep, I remember so that. So you either got tough yep. and got mean because now they weren't going to hurt you because you were the same size. Yeah. <laughs> they may be a year or two older, but they, you were the same size. Correct, mindset. But, man, when you when you undersized, that, I think that can hurt a kid. Oh, absolutely, that can hurt a kid. I, and I think a lot of it pertains to these coaches and them kind of getting off. On oh yeah, I got this big kid. You know what I'm saying? He's dominating it, and uh, they're reliving maybe what they didn't have. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I don't know. I, I don't. I can't. I can't relate. But we've seen it, right? We've seen it too many times where these coaches get so involved and so hyped because these kids are like oh yeah, this kid, I got this one kid, and then they, they allow them to become bullies in a sense, and you know they become batter rams. And I don't know, man. I don't know. One dude man. told me. <laughs> He walked up to me and said, man, I won seven straight Super Bowls. <laughs> and I looked at it because he was an older gentleman. I said, well, who did you? And I'm like, yeah, who did you play for? Who yeah. did you play for? Yeah, I didn't know there oh, was a no, team. No, I'm talking about Pop Warner team. Stop this, Nate. Stop this. I looked at him and I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I looked at him. I looked at him and said, yes, sir. And I just, uh, hold on. And I cut hold that on, conversation hold on. So, so, short. so you went from being excited. You going through like, yeah. Hey, no, nobody got seven. Jamie, that was Super Bowl. Yeah, I said, no, like, no. Man, is he Tom Brady's great granddad? <laughs> so funny. But, and I, I, and I don't want to take away from His nobody's joy. Yeah, yeah. thunder. But if that's your goal in life, now if he'd have walked up and told me, hey, I have eight or nine kids that's at Duncanville or South Lake. Yeah. They're well coached kids. They're doing good because I taught them proper technique. 
and they're playing for the South Lake Carols or the Duncanvilles of the world or the DeSotos. Now he would have kept my attention. No, but how'd he come at you, Nate? When he told me he won <laughs> six, seven Super Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Was he rocking the rings? Oh, Was man. he rocking the rings? Oh, <laughs> he <should man>. <laughs> oh gosh. Hey, but see, I, I I tell people, people come to me for advice. Okay. And the first thing I tell them, I say, is I try to say, do you have a trainer in your area that you trust? Yeah. Because I cannot, you know, I know I know how to set up techniques, but is your kid even conditioned for these mm -hmm. techniques? Mm -hmm. So I try to direct, if it's a trainer, yeah. a foot person like you, foot, yeah, yeah, yeah. hips, hey, go to that person. See their mechanics, right? Seeking, yeah. Yeah. And let, the, and let them help. Then go to your coach. At your high school, they should know someone okay. that can help your kid. Now, you know. on that, a lot of these high school coaches now, at least in Texas, these programs have gotten so big. These, these coaches yes. are getting paid so much. There's recruiting going on. I don't care what nobody says. There's right. recruiting going on. Yeah. People are moving around from city to city and state to state to go play at these football programs. Right. Uh, what's your thoughts on these coaches – that are so protective of their kids and their programs that they don't want their kids training other places and getting outside help. That, 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 once again, that's bad parenting. Yeah. See, uh, my kid, you know, fell into that at South Lake. And I told him, I said, you, you, you hurting yourself. Mm. You know, but his mom was running things. So I, okay. Backed up, yeah. Yeah, you, you, but you're hurting yourself mm. because you, you're taking away from what you can be. You know, he would let them run track, and then when, when, when spring training, they, you know, they got to go between track. I, I just like, I used to look at them, yeah. you know, and, I, and, and hope that somebody can get smart. I mean, this is what gets me is you, you go 365 days a year playing basketball. That's stupid. That's that's wear and tearing the you, same muscle groups. You go 165 days a year playing football. That's stupid. Yeah, you know. Uh, baseball, you go all year round. That's stupid. Yeah. And so I, I have a friend, uh, and I've been watching and monitoring his kid ever since he was young. And I, I used to tell him, all I'm asking you to do is stretch your kid, mm -hmm. keep him stretch always, keep him stretch, keep him hydrated. Don't let him throw his arm out because he was a young yeah, man, baseball, young baby. Yeah. He could pitch. I said, yeah. please, please don't let no curve. Only fastball. Yep, straight Only ahead. fastball. No curves. Just. Yep. And he listened to me. Now, I don't know an ounce about baseball. Yeah, but you know that. I, I knew curveballs <laughs> can break kids' elbow. Elbows. Yeah, that, absolutely. And Tommy so, John. And I told him, I said, keep your kids stretched. And I say, please, after every baseball season, can he get two weeks off? Yeah. Can he? Don't run him right into another, you know. And he looked, he, I said, I'm serious. Trust me. Yeah. And uh, nice kid getting ready to, I think, go to Texas A&M. There you go. Yeah, he nice. getting ready to go because he took care of his kid. Yep. And the same thing you talked about about <laughs> talking to mom, we're going we're not gonna let him go to practice today. Dad, like, oh, come on now. What mm -hmm. you what you doing here? Yeah. You looking at this short term, I'm looking at this long term. Yeah. If you if you start giving kids I mean, what if he was a basketball you can't player? Give, if he wasn't get to the NBA, he'll be probably taking 15, 20 games. You can't. Yeah, exactly. That's what's going on now, <laughs> yeah, right? We're seeing yeah, that in the NBA. It's, it's, yeah. it's just different, man. Culturally different. You know, guys are more. Back in the day, cats didn't take games off. Games off. Are well, you paid to do a job? It, it, I, that's what I tell. I'm like, you can't <laughs> games give, off. You can't give a full, honest opinion of another man that you see on film and you know what you're looking. At. And you can't just be like, you know, like I said something the other day about, uh, I called uh, the Colts garbage. I'm like, they garbage. Yeah. You know, not that they players can't do the job, Correct. but their mentality yes. is not allowing them to overcome Correct. these obstacles. Correct. And so that, I'm talking about the mentality, not they, because they got Nelson, mm -hmm. big all pro guard. Yeah. Uh, oh, the their big, old line is yeah, nice oh, on man, paper. Yeah, they got Kelly to sell. They yeah, got they've nice, invested a lot of money yeah. in their old line. So I'm, I'm like, you got a nice offensive line, then Shaquille, uh, the linebackers hurt. Yeah. You know, then you still got the boy they got from uh, the Dominic Patriots. Uh, so they got players, yeah. but they, 
When you when you get that garbage mentality, which I had when I first got to the Cowboys, when you get that garbage mentality, you ain't gonna work hard. Yep. You ain't gonna do nothing extra. Yeah. You, you know, you get injured. It's you know, a two week injury turned into a month. Yeah. All right. Before before we hop off, what's, what's your one piece of advice for for parents out there that are that are dealing with children who are not wanting to fully commit, or even just to the parents that are that are that need to understand what it takes. If you don't quit. They won't quit. Yeah. My father never quit. Yeah. He got up every day, every morning at two in the morning, came home every night at eight o'clock. Yeah. I never seen him quit. I never seen my mom. I seen her sick. She they never quit. Yeah. If your kids never see you quit, yep. then they won't quit. But when they see you quit, yeah. and so you allow them to quit, exit door. Just understand you creating this. Absolutely. I'm with you on that one, Nate, darling. Your kids are watching. Yes, yes, they, they are. are watching, man. Hey, appreciate the wisdom, Nate, dog, as always. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. We see y'all next time. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't quit.